Hello again, it's Sarah of Get Weaving. It's a lovely day here. Daffodils are starting to flower, which is great because it was snowing on Friday. Hmm. Anyhow, bit of a recap. Last time we were looking at uh, making a mock-up for your pattern, just to make sure everything fits and to give you a chance to try out the instructions. So I'm working through weaving piece of fabric for this pattern here T001 it's going to be in wool which I've spun and it's the short sleeve version recently I shared some sheets in my Etsy shop for you to download and print at home they're help sheets rather than me keep holding them up in front of you so one of them for example was uh, useful pieces of equipment that's this one here just things that are really handy to have around such as for example a yarn gauge you can get loads of different ones of these wraps per inch and a suggested set for them um, I love my Ashford plastic threading hook because it doesn't damage the threads your yarns and a <laughs> very important a calculator so I can do my sums. <laughs> Useful books list. Just books I often refer to. They might help a bit. Some of you have probably got them already. I've also put on a blank project sheet. This is the one that I use. I do try and keep notes as I go along. So you can download this and start filling it out yourself. Then there was, um, this is links to my Instagram. You can see I've been having fun colouring. <laughs> Can't help it. And then what we're doing today is about getting the set right for your yarns. So you can download those five sheets anyhow. One of the first things I say um, when you're choosing your yarn, I've put a picture of this on one of the sheets, is to test it in the heddle. So pull it backwards and forwards. Make sure it doesn't shred or stick or get caught. You could thread it through a hole and a slot if you wanted. That's a good indicator to start with. And then what I do is I go on to doing wraps per inch. Now this is the yarn that I'm going to be using. This has 15 wraps per inch. This is Ashford, this one. But again, there's lots of different ones you can find. And this is the way I show people how I do my wraps. This one is wraps per inch for this particular yarn. This was sport yarn. I know they're not <laughs> very sophisticated, but they still work. Uh, this one is if you're using two different yarns for your warp and your weft. So you wrap them both together and then you just count your warp yarns. If you're using the same yarn for your warp and your weft like this one, I've got 15 wraps to the inch, so I'll halve that so that I have a fairly balanced weave. And so that's 7.5. This is my project sheet so far. So I've got on there, excuse my fingers, uh, the layout of the pattern down here. I'm also going to later on put things like um, a remnant of the fabric, a photo of the garment when I'm wearing it. And it's got all sorts of things on there like the weight of the yarn when you start, the weight of the yarn when you've finished. I just like to keep all those notes so that next time if I make something similar, I know roughly what I'm going to, to need. I decided I would, to be on the safe side, to be absolutely sure I'd weave a sample and I made it on this little tiny loom. It's um, from somewhere like Bulgaria, I believe. It's a tape loom, but it's brilliant. I took the middle bit out I've clamped a little tiny bit of rigid header on there. It was easy enough to thread up. Uh, you can get all sorts of different rigid headles. So this is a really old one. That's a Metalix heddle. That's 13 to the inch. That's for fine yarns. This one was handy. And this, this is one of the sections from the variable read. That's really handy. So this one was five. This is a lovely one made by a Tudor weaver. She makes tapes. I, I have to collect these things. I can't resist it. Anyhow, the one I've got in here is 7.5. So I put on a bit of a warp 
and it's great because it's got little rollers at the back and the front they're just in with a pin at the moment so I was able to push enough on I didn't want to do a big sample because I want to keep as much of the yarn as possible to make the garment you can actually even weave things around a bit of cardboard that one is five ends to the inch that one so doesn't matter too much but I did decide I would make a sample because I'm using all hand spun yarn and I don't want to waste it so this was my sample on the my right hand side probably your left it's got um, the sample I drew around it when I cut it off and then I washed it as I'm going to wash it so warm water dried on the line and it's shrunk a little tiny bit in the length not much none at all in the width so I'm really pleased that means it's the right set and when I picked it up it feels nice if I'd done it on a looser set like a five it would be very open might have even shrunk a lot more might have drawn in on the loom if I'd done it on a tighter set like a 10 it would be much more rigid now I just want this for a top that's comfortable to wear so that set was absolutely fine for me um, if you have any of these lying around these are really handy as well little tiny looms I do think it's worth making a sample these days so these are my yarns they started off like this they were singles that I used for a dress and then I've plied them all together so I have got these all right they're not plied together in any particular order so I've got lots and lots of different colors and I'm going to warp up at random and I'm going to weave at random so I <laughs> I'm not quite sure how it's going to turn out at the moment but that's half the fun of it I don't make big samples because then all the fun goes into that as you can see these are wound into balls on a ball winder now that is one of the things I find really useful I've also stuck a knitting needle through, oops, through the middle so that the balls don't collapse so they stayed on there um, when I'm threading my rigid heddle loom I'll have the ball of yarn on the floor or in a bucket possibly and I'll pull it from the center that way there's no extra tension on it you in my opinion it's always best to wind your yarns so that they're coming the same way if they're all coming off cones or if they're all coming from a ball make sure that the tension is the same because that's one of the things when you're weaving if one of the threads is looser or tighter then you won't get a decent shed so I always wind my balls on my ball winder store them until I need them I've weighed everything uh, the other thing that's really useful is one of these this is a yarn yardage measurer so the yarn gets run round here through the top and then you can measure it off on here it's by Stanwood which is American <laughs> the only problem is it measures it in meters and I'm still working in inches so I have to convert everything hence the calculator but anyway it's really handy I clamp this to the table and I clamp my ball winder down the other end and I can measure exactly how many meters I've got of yarn so I worked all that out for this project and I know I've got plenty for the warp and for the weft what I really don't want to do is run out three quarters of the way through and then have to invent something <laughs> I've got a bit past that <laughs> different color bands I mean you know it happens but I'd rather not at the moment so I'm going to probably call it a day at that um, the next session is going to be actually threading your loom which is going to take a bit of organizing just so that um, anybody who's wondering I often get asked what I'm wearing well, I've got these on today they're my dungarees so that's TR005 they're cotton they've got little buttons on them and then over the top is is this vest VE002 and this is my daughter and my daughter-in-law doing my modeling for me <laughs> it's very handy having nice family members so um have a good day or week and i hope the weather is being kind to you and i'll see you again soon bye now